<laughs> so one last thing. Uh, this is kind of cheesy. <laughs> Can I get you uh, get you saying? Uh, do you want it in unison or? No, just say whatever. Too. Yeah, individually. Oh, oh can we do K individual? Can I get a? Uh, I'm I'm Anthony Bourdain. Welcome to Food Coma TV, and then I'm Eric Repair. Welcome to Food Coma TV. Uh, I'm Anthony. With Bourdain. lots of enthusiasm. <laughs> I'm Anthony Bourdain. <laughs> I'm Anthony Bourdain. Welcome to Food Coma TV. I'm Eric Repair. Welcome to Food Coma TV. In this episode of Food Coma TV, we have the privilege of interviewing Anthony Bourdain, author and host of the Travel Channel's No Reservations, in addition to Eric Repair, executive chef at Le Bernardin, and a TV personality himself. We're about to go meet up with uh we're about to go meet up with Anthony Bourdain and put him on Food Coma TV. Basically, I was supposed to have a segment uh, when he had come to town last. Uh, we rode around the bay lines and drank wine and uh, ate lobster rolls. And that got canceled. So because of the weather, it was a big blizzard that day. And so yeah, it's basically just, you know catching up on last time there. I don't know, what do I expect today? Tell me what, what I expect. Do you expect anything? No. You what just want to hang out? What do you <laughs> I just want to hang out. Nice to meet you, man. I'm Alex. So, yeah. Nice to meet there you. you. We came to ease your pain a little. Uh, prefer Bruder Rosé. Oh, God. A couple grower producers here from uh, Champagne. Thank you. Terry Thies' books. Nice to meet yeah. you. Any preference so, to start? I, I'll take a glass of Rosé. Yeah, right. me too, the Rosé. Perfect. And I'll just go ahead and pour all these, and they might um, mysteriously get taken in the other glasses, too. Yeah, I figured we... Imagine that. Yeah. <laughs> Strange. And you. there you are. Thank you very you much. Are. Good to Cheers. meet you, gentlemen. Good. Good to meet you, too. Thank you. Now, shall we sit down? I get to be single on the big chair. <laughs> Lucky That's me. the Oprah chair. Yeah, this is the Oprah chair. <laughs> I think I fill her shoes well. This is Maine. Um, so, because we're actually uh, doing a show about Maine, and I know you've been here, your, your first time was actually when you filmed your show here yes. last. Uh, so what were the things that you enjoyed the most about Maine? I know the bean supper and everything up north. You know, for me, it was, a, it, was a really, it was a personal show. I mean, uh, one of my camera guys uh, is from Milo and, you know, loves his home state. And, you know, I probably spend more time with my camera crew. Well, there's no question about it. I spend more time with my camera crew than anybody else in my life by, by, by tenfold. We spend a lot of time talking about shit we like and stuff we don't like, and he's always saying to me, "Dude, you know, Maine, you got to come up. We'll go do a you know bean supper. We'll go out in the woods. It's totally awesome, and you know, it's not just about the coast, man. You got to get into the interior. It's a whole different world." He was really selling me on it, and as often happens in the way so a lot of our shows are made, is eventually I crack it and say, "Okay." Uh, so show me, smart guy. Let's go. And and I had a you know a really great time. Jay's oyster is completely fucking awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and if, yeah. if 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 I had a place like that in my neighborhood um, in, in Upper East Side of Manhattan, I would be like quantifiably happier in in all my works and all my days and ways. I, I would just that would enrich my life in in every possible way. If I knew that when I go home. That you know, within walking distance of my house, that place was there. I would just, the world would would acquire a pink and happy hue. <laughs> I, feel like maybe, I feel like I should maybe learn from that. Cause I'm like, I guess I have access to it. Maybe I should go more. <laughs> it's 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 perfect, you know. And it's you know, it's it's one of those places. Jay's Oyster is one of those places like the uh, House of Prime Rib in San Francisco, where a lot of locals who've grown up with it. They'll say, wait, wait, you know, that's not the best prime rib in San Francisco. You know, there were better steaks elsewhere. Who cares? There's, you know, this is a an or, as an organic or as an organic entity, as a mixture of 
you know, the, the people who work there, the physical store itself, its location, the, you know, the music, the, the, the food, the, the fact that they've got awesome steamers, the, the, the people, it just, it all conspires to, to, to a, a, you know, be right in my happy zone. So basically, at what point, you know, because the, the whole, this event is kind of revolves a little bit around your, the restaurant career, and I guess, right, the differences between the two of your paths, pretty much, that's the good versus evil, or is that the, is that the premise of the, of the? There's no premise. <laughs> I interrogate him, then he cross-examines me. It's nice. very uncomfortable. We always ask. And it's very uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. I tell you, we nice. ask and the we most make, uncomfortable we have, some, house. we have some very good uh, um, questions for each other all the time, and we improvise <laughs> in each in each city. And um, I make him sweat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, he knows. <laughs> you know, yeah, he, knows he knows where, how, to, yeah. where to put, put his <laughs> thumb right. He, in the, he knows mm -hmm. your Achilles heel. <laughs> Many of them <laughs> exploits the yeah, the many Achilles heels, and then we you know then we sit down and we, and we talk about uh, stuff. I mean, he, I guess issues uh, related to food, restaurants, mm -hmm. the chefs, um, and then we take questions and, and serious answers. subjects. Sometimes, I mean, yeah, yeah very often, so, very subject, mm -hmm. important subjects. Uh, sustainability, sustainability, uh, for instance, uh, uh, being green. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's, uh, it's something that is. Definitely in, in our mind each time we sit down and talk and uh, and we share that with the public. How green should we be? Right. How much should we care? I mean, I'm always kind of pushing that because, he's you know, where do you balance pleasure versus yeah. uh, carbon footprint? Uh, yeah. You know, there. You know, I, you know, we're all trying to be good people. Right. Uh, but we're also sensualists, or at least, well, we both are. I mean, we both like good stuff that feels sure. good. Hey. He, <laughs> he's a little Drink more. Of a, stuff that feels good. He's a little more of a hardliner on, you know, not hurting the earth. Right. You know, I'm. It's a, actually it's a question that'll come up. Cool. Um, I'm, I'm a little more willing to hurt the earth if it's really delicious. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah exactly. I'm, I have to be. I'm right there with. But it you. has to be really delicious to make it worth it. Yeah. One of the questions I was going to ask you actually is, um, uh, I recently I've worked in a lot of restaurants my whole life, uh, and I've kind of. Transition into this now and writing and doing this. And, and what was the point in your uh, career where you actually were, were finally comfortable referring to yourself not as a, a cook anymore, but actually as a writer? Like, when did you? Because, like, I still even even if I don't, I'm still like I'm a server. I mean, actually, no, I, it, it I took write. a couple of years. Yeah, I mean, I'd been out two years away from working every day in a restaurant. I was making a living writing and making television. But I still called myself a chef for a while because I figured, how long can this last? Well, because well, you always feel like you're going to get sucked back. You're, like, you're always on the you're verge of like, back. I'm going to go back in. It's all going to fall apart. Yeah. And I'm going to be better, you know, I'm going to be back on a brunch shift. The last question uh, that I have is basically, seeing as, you know, you've kind of, you've been everywhere and done everything, you know, why should I even bother doing this <laughs> if you've already covered it all? What's left for me to do? Oh. <laughs> you know. I, I make my show because it's fun. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so who gives a shit about the audience? I know. I watch it. I'm like, well, he's covering everything I want to do. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> hopefully the audience will, if, if you're having fun and you're interested, hopefully the audience will come along with you. But, I mean, you don't go out there doing what I do. Uh, to my mind, I don't know why anyone would make television if it's not fun. If it's a job. There are plenty more dignified things to do, and I would say brunch is one of them. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. that's real work. No, okay, maybe no brunch. not brunch. Yeah. brunch. Yeah. We're talking like at least Thursday night shifts, not brunch. See, that, that was the, the, yeah. the, the sort of the terrible truth of my whole uh, journey the in my of your career was, yeah. that, was that I always knew no matter how bad things were in my life and how badly I screwed up and how, what kind of bad decisions I made, yeah. there was a, that I was a good brunch cook and that I could always get a job Work at Saturday, Sundays. Nobody wants to for cash. No, brutal, 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 brutal transition there. Yeah. 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 So that was always waiting for me in my low moments. So to this day, if I smell like French toast cooking, I get you know. this little. No. <laughs> <laughs>
They did. Basically, the moral of the story is if you show up with enough champagne, people are going to be have a great time. They're going to be fine. They're going to chill out. No. They're going to chill the fuck out. Everything's going to yeah. be okay. And they were very candid. It was awesome. It was nice. They're very candid. Whether you agree with him or not, as I know he's been controversial, it's like he's going to tell you how he feels. He does things because he enjoys them. And he doesn't see any point in doing it or not enjoying it, which is why you know he's telling the truth when he says he doesn't like something because, yeah. you know. And also it's what makes his show, you know, magnetic is that, you know, you can tell that he's having a blast. You can tell that he's out there doing things he's interested yeah. in. And this is what you want. This is what he wants to do. That's what I want to do. Yeah. They didn't get snappy when I poured champagne on him. I was and, Alex, and Alex poured champagne all over Anthony Bourdain without putting his penis in his <laughs> mouth. And Anthony Bourdain didn't even mind. When I, when I poured the wine on, 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 uh, on Mr. Bourdain, Tony's hand, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I then made matters probably worse by putting my hand on his you, hand and saying, and saying the, I'm, I'm sorry, saying, Mr. Bourdain. I'm sorry, Mr. Bourdain. <laughs> oh, what dude. do you do in that situation? That's, you don't do what you did. <laughs> This is so quickly becoming a gay show. <laughs> <laughs> <I know. laughs>